we're pretty much done for the day. Um, had a good harvest here today, good picking, and uh, it's uh, time we finish now, I think, and uh, head off back to the winery. The end of the day, lovely day's picking here at Gallywood Vineyard. Well, this is what we've been picking. The lovely Chardonnay grape. Where it all happens. We're so lucky to have this sort of thing on our doorstep, really. Sun's going down. Just had some a shower, but it's been very enjoyable. Now here's the man who knows all about grapes in Gallywood. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Ian is his name. And uh, we've had a good day here, Ian. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, that's why I've had lots of people. Yeah, say. yeah, yeah thoroughly enjoyed it. it. It's, it's win-win. Yes, say. yeah, yeah. We pick, and uh, you press, and uh, we end up with a lovely yeah. bottle of Gallywood yeah. Pinot Noir, and a lovely, meal. And a lovely and meal lunchtime. Cakes, cakes in the afternoon. Coffee. So if anybody's ah. looking for a day, yeah. Um, Keep, keep your eyes on next Tuesday, Wednesday, and it might be the end. Right. So we've finished. got two more days next week. I think so, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I've set up a subject today, and uh, it's uh, a bottle of the local wine here in Gallywood from the Gallywood Vineyards. And the reason for this is that. Um, I went picking grapes for um, the press the other day, so I thought I'd um, set up a subject here in the studio to, um, as a memory really, of the day spent at the uh, at the vineyard picking grapes. Um, quite a simple subject: an empty glass, bottle not corked yet, um, and the grapes from the vineyard. Um, so, um, hope you enjoy. Uh, the video and enjoy watching how I put this down onto watercolour paper. Well as you can see I'm all set up for my next painting subject after a lovely day spent at Gallywood Vineyards picking their lovely grapes to make their beautiful wine I decided to paint a memory of that. Well, there's the subject in hand. Um, nice composition, nice bit of light there. Now the sun is moving round. And uh, put the drawing down onto my paper. Just pan down into that. I'm going to film this in a, in a landscape format. I think that suits the, uh, um, the video better when it's seen on the screen. So let's get cracking with the um, with the painting process. Now, basically, um, the background is a pink, quite a light pink cloth. So I'm using my number four um, pointed mop, and I'm going to start at the top. Now I'm going to I'm not damping the paper. I'm going to try and keep a nice flow of paint as I come down. Now we're looking at Olizu and Crimson, could use Rose Madder. Trying to get a cleanish wash here. And I'm adding to that little Indian Red, because it's not really a pink as such. Uh, well, it is a pink, but it's a lighter pink. And I'm going to go around the bottle purely because it's quite, um, although the bottle is darker, I want to have highlights on that bottle. So I'm picking around the bottle. Notice I'm trying to work all the way across the paper like that. Trying to keep it nice and, nice and wet as I work. And then I come down that side of the bottle. Then I'm coming down this side. I keep adding colour to the brush. Never run out of paint with the brush. That bead of water hanging along the bottom, bead of paint, is um, 
something that uh, one has to learn to do that very early on in their painting process or painting skills because you do need to have that um, that skill been able to paint like that now the key to it is that can you see the way I've actually added a little bit of life to the background by I've just added a little bit more Indian red so that we can just get a, a, a little bit of fill of light coming in so we've got one or two darker areas I'm getting a little darker as I'm coming down and I'm going to paint around the glass now although we can see through the glass the glass will be a somewhat different through the glass will be somewhat different colour purely because not got any wine in there because this one is going to be called before the corking try and pick up that come down making that just a little more narrow looked as if the, the bottle was a bit thick plenty of water going in more paint a little bit darker as I come down trying to keep the fluted glass reasonable shape I mean that's that's one thing that uh, is um, more difficult to do when you're um, painting this sort of subject to keep the balance but if you can get a clean wash of colour going round the edge of the bowl round the base of the glass the bottom just trying to keep it all coming down nice and nice and damp it's quite warm in here sun's coming through the um, window the reason I've used the pointed brush because just see the balance of that glass maybe I need just to come in just a little more than that there you go and then I'm going to pick just be aware that every, everything's drying all the time pick around the grapes there we are just being aware that it's drying base of that glass trying to keep that reasonably damp there we are a bit more water a bit more of both colors it's getting a little darker now because I do feel that that probably is what I'm looking for around if you do go over and you need to um, mop away you can do I've just gone over a little there so it may need mopping away later on that's the, the base of the bowl this is not going to be sort of like a, a what I'd class as a as a real um, it's a study don't like to keep them too tight I like to keep um, these sort of um, paintings as loose as possible it does give you a bit of an idea you know it does give you a bit of opportunity to um, to use a bit of license try and get the roundness of those grapes a little better just create the roundness of those that's perfect just drop into there that's okay as I say it is getting a little bit tight but hopefully it won't come up too tight right now I'm adding a little more water to try and keep it fairly loose and in the lower area I'm going to add a little raw sienna to that just to ring the changes a little and there is a couple of folds one there one there and one there now that's the start of the fold um, not that um, noticeable at this stage but 
it's um yeah I think that probably does it for our first wash now I've moved over to a number seven um, brush now and just going to touch in the cork and to me that's pretty much raw sienna really so it's just beginning to dry just use my mill stick just to support my hand it's always useful to do and too much of this on the but I want to leave a bit of light there we go so that's the cork it actually stands up these corks do go in but it's quite rounded there we are it's nice and dry so that's took that now just needed that smaller brush for that now I'm going to move to a number eight um, that points so let me find the number eight that points there we are that's a new one so we get a reasonable point from that and I'm going to do the bottle itself okay now the bottle itself is a green brown um, sort of a yellowy green brown really so I'm going to use burnt umber with raw sienna so it's burnt umber raw sienna that will give me my initial start and when I want it to go darker I'll actually put in probably ultramarine but anyway let's make a start nice sort of like a yellowy brown really and we've got the neck of the bottle there just leaving a bead unpainted just to show where all these edges are you can touch them in at a later date now we've also got a traditional cord that runs around that um, is tradition with the hanging of tradition to Gallywood Vineyard the little logo is the hook and all you do you just go around it like that and that will be painted in later go around the hook because it's aluminium so got to create a hook there we go and down you go now we do have a streak of light there working my way down keep reloading this brush we want it to stay damp and because the board's at an angle it will run down at quite a, a nice angle may get a bit mottled but that's not a problem um, as we work our way down and that streak of light is always useful just leaving a bead of white on that edge I think I will perhaps not that edge don't want to change the shape of the bottle but just a streak there we go and we're going to have another just around this edge here because that will show the contour of the bottle like that. there we go and we're heading off down and around that edge down and around that edge now I'm just using a damp brush with just a I can see just a tad of blue in there so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use cobalt blue for this and just stroke that in there, there and there that seems to wipe around there for some unknown reason there you go and then we can then paint down and that gets us a nice bit of light onto that bottle This is the initial 
color. There we go, nice bit of sort of bluey light really onto that bottle and then we have to go round the label like that there we go and when you've been picking for the um, vineyard you do get a, a feel for the for these lovely old um, bottles and you know if you've been in the vineyard you know um, right just go down a bit further with that now we get a little darker just before it dries and I'm going to add ultramarine to that and there is a darker section just down there considerably darker and it, it runs more or less up to there you've got a small dark section there the cork you can actually see but Around the outside of that cork is quite dark initially. Then it turns a bit as the neck goes around. This is quite dark this side. Like that. It heads down there like that. To that area. And then actually quite a bit of blue this side don't know why that is but it's going in that'll blend nicely with that lighter blue that's there just a streak down there and as that turns you can see the contour of that um, area that's it They've got to be determined brush strokes. There we go. That's lovely. And the pinky and the lighter colour is actually the red coming through from the back. Or the pink coming through from the back. And then of course when we go down into the lower area, that's when it is very dark because of the thickness of the bottle. So it was um, extremely dark around that bottom edge although there is a highlight there somewhere but let's just see if I can pick that up first get the edge of that bottle like that what a reasonable turn to that I think that's that's pretty much there yep a bit down there that's good now, if you want to lift off additional highlights, you get yourself a damp flat brush, not wet, damp, okay, and you draw down like that. And this is where you get the soft highlights. Um, there is just a, a highlight here somewhere, streaks across like that. There we are. What it is, ah, that's from that... Uh, Ah, that's what that is. Oh, and there's a little touch there. And a little bit there. Just cast them across the bottle, really. Clean the brush. Take off the moisture again. Also, a little sort of highlight there. A little bit there. And I think, to be fair about it, we can go over certain areas again if we want to. But at the moment, I'm pretty much happy with um, with that sort of interpretation, really. Just pick up the cork a bit more. We can see the cork running down inside the bottle. There we go. And that needs to be left to completely dry. Just soften that a bit. That looks a bit heavy there. There we are. Just lift that off. That's it. Perfect. Okay, we mustn't play too much. Let's leave that to completely dry. Now the glass. Gone back to my number seven. Um, and we can see inside the glass, it's that pinky colour that we started with, but 
I'm going to put ultramarine with that because it's a duller, it's not as brilliant pinky colour. So we can see through, but it's not as brilliant. And you've got to remember there is a rim around the edge. So we've got to leave that because there's light on that. So it comes around like that. We can lift off, tidy up that edge shortly. Right, now we can we come around like that, leaving just a bead. This went a bit tight there, but there you go. And an edge down there. So that's that there, pretty much as is, I think. Like that. Then there's plenty of sort of light in the lower part of this stem. There is actually just a little bit of this darker pink. Pick up some off the brush. There we go. As we head down, the colour seems to be more vibrant in this lower area. And as we go round, got some very light pinks down the base there. That's good. I'm using that flat again just to lift off and soften some, not all, it's a bit of an area that just tucks back in there that wants softening too. So you have soft edges and hard edges within these uh, shaded areas. And that's the thing that will give you that feeling of an empty glass because we can see through it and yet it's not exactly the same colour. Um, simple as that really, you know. A little bit of pinkiness now, a little darker pink, just in the base here. I want to try and pick up where that finishes there. Just enter a bit into that there like that. There we are. And that comes right the way down to the edge of the bowl. See where that shows a bit more interest from the background at that point. Can't really see the stem. So, and then we just have this similar sort of pink in the base there. Leaving the, the, the rim again as the edge. We'll tidy that up shortly when we get the, um, the finishing touches coming along. Now the grapes themselves are cadmium yellow using number eight that points, cadmium yellow um, with a touch of ultramarine in there. Some of them are darker than others, um, but let's get them all in this sort of coloration first. I may have to lift off some highlights here and there. Up. So that's basically all you need to do, just put in the basic grapes that uh, run along the edge there. Try and keep that edge fairly straight if they join. And I'm going to do the same here with these. Lovely little grapes they are. Not difficult to paint. Well, hopefully. Like that. Leaving plenty of little light areas so we can get highlights on them. Um, the stems, well, put a bit of raw sienna with that. It's a bit more deeper, sort of yellowy sort of stem. Comes across there like that. And this one too. Now the background is dry. That's it. Good. Okay. We'll allow that to dry. 
good well I have moved on a little I'll put a little um, grey bit of blue and brown uh, around that um, edge uh, and I'll put in a little bit darker um, brown grey uh, for the writing but the only thing you can really see is galley wood the rest is uh, a bit you know blurred we don't really need that sort of detail um, just got to finally put in the um, using this blue grey again um, finally put in the hook and that's on a rounded area like that and it comes round like that and to a point and that's connected to that there and that really is the label complete pretty simple sub, uh, um, way of doing it so some of you may be a little uh, more detailed than that and I'm also going to use this same colour quite weak because I don't want to lose it if you notice I've used a grey sorry a red for the for the like an orange for that the, they always have a piece of cord around um, the um, the top holding that hook which is their trademark really um, good so there you have it now we move to the grapes and all I've done for the darker colour is um, put in a little more blue really into the mix we had earlier and uh, that, that's dry now so we'll get uh, hard edges I'm using quite a small brush here uh, because it's um, and I'm putting it on the left hand side and underneath to try and get can you see where we're beginning to form a rounded shape and if you do that you get a nice rounded feel so you've got light and this is the darker side so that's the light this is the darker side no white touches there and really you know to suggest grapes um, pretty much all you need to do uh, to be fair about it you know it's not a difficult thing to achieve just got to get a rounded feel to that um, leaving one or two light edges see I've just left some white paper just lose that a little um, because that helps to enhance that effect good now it's just really the shadow work I don't want to get too complicated with this um, now a weak shadow on the bottle and I'm going to use the mix is cobalt blue and alizarin crimson and it doesn't want to be too powerful on the bottle initially now we've got the top I can just get the hand steady for this across there the cork is completely there we go this left hand side is all in shadow including that but the thickness of that is going to be left unpainted that will shine through underneath that little area there it's a shadow under there and then a little touch in there I don't want to lose that and then we stroke that on there as you can see it's only weak it's not a really strong colour and it comes out like that down like that and it pretty much covers that complete label like that then we get a damp half inch to soften down that edge there like that it needs to be a bit more damper than that we mustn't remove the underpainting but we've got to show that there is a definite turn once that dries 
that will come up extremely well. To justify that, we get a shadow across the base that spreads out from the base like that. Comes from quite a way back across there and it doesn't go over that so they are left in light yep and then we get a shadow from the turn of that like that and that runs across the base of that there we go so that will pull that in and we get the rounded shape there and I can just see a glance of light running here and that goes up over there so that says a turn there in the cloth like that and then that runs away like that to an area that follows the other turn there and while we're here let's just soften that now I have so that's soft and this is soft as that shoots off there we are and then we get another there is another bit of light um, onto the foreground here and that jumps up and turns down again and sneaks across like that to reload now and that pretty much runs right the way across there it will go up some of those grapes but not all of them as that runs down the back edge of those grapes there that's it then that just sweeps away because we want this foreground to be in complete shadow yep like that just shows a bit of unevenness to the to that area a bit more blue going in here now just to ring the changes and the bottle then casts a shadow um, we've got the inside that we can actually see a shadow there and certainly the inside of that like that there's quite a big lip on that Just take a bit of off the brush because we've got some shadow onto some of these grapes not all of them but little touches of them and that creates the lip that runs like that then on the back edge of that lip there is this shadow again right so that's and that runs under the lip like that up to there there we go and then this then hits that at that angle so all of a sudden You've got the feeling of pull that through there we go and then you've got the feeling of that creating another and there's a there's a turn there so it goes up again and just bringing a little unevenness to that uneven feel to that yeah i think that probably works i'm going to put another little shadow up there just just for interest sweep that through there we go and that's got to have a lip on that there we go that's good okay just a little more blue now just to drop in just before it dries on that underside of that lip there i think that probably works quite well and perhaps down this back edge there 
just before it dries it will gradually run down yeah that's uh, looking good okay just a couple of areas that I'm going to soften just because they're hard edged and I feel soft edges would be better that's a little area there and over there it's a little area here so we've got hard edges and soft edges all playing against each other bit of a soft edge there hard edge where it leaves the bowl um, brilliant I'm pretty much happy with that really it seems to come off uh, quite well overall okay let's allow that to dry now while that's drying I do have a lot of area of light at the top but I need a dark shaft or two so I'm damping with the flat just damping the paper in just a couple of places um, where will I have another dark area I don't want the dark area let's, let's just be satisfied with a couple of dark areas there like that let's just see where we go with this okay bit more cobalt blue this time don't want the too heavy and I'm going to have a streak of more or less shadow there and another streak of shadow there and then as it runs out of picture which let me tapers down has come up a little I'm going to weaken it considerably then weaken under there and that gives you a sense that there's light coming from the right hand side another dark area there perhaps not opposed to that we'll need softening but um, don't want to take away from the effect of um, of light on the subject but it just needs to be uh, just balanced a bit really I think that probably balances it balances things quite well a bit of light coming in here so let's put something up to stop that shaft of light because it's not on in the painting there are some little finishing touches that we will need to put in and for this I'm going for a blue grey not too dark cobalt blue a little um, of the what have I put with that cobalt blue with a little um, Indian red and these let's put these on the bottle first uh, a little touch under there just to enhance that um, a little down there to give a sort of like a secondary shadow on that a little under there just down that back edge and just picking up one or two little touches there just to give it a little bit of a and just tidy up this edge with this dark color you can do that quite successfully to actually balance the bottle Ah, I think it probably does it and I'm going to put another little touch down there only obviously as far as the label see where it gives another sort of additional dark color that probably is the thickness of the bottle because you've got to remember the bottle has a thickness as well and that uh, is always something that is uh, worth thinking about and the base of the bottle is very dark it's going to be dark there about that a couple of little because this the, the bottle has a, has a bit of thickness so where it's dark let's make it dark not getting not get losing the the little sunlit areas but the bottle has a thickness that it's not always got light on it 
so the bottle has some thickness now I'm just pulling streaking down with this small brush here and there just trying to achieve some additional areas of light yep so that doesn't get on there that's fine okay so I think that's probably the bottle now we're going quite a bit of blue now because a bit of water um, because the glass lends itself I think glass always lends itself to being a blue so there's like a blue tint to that back edge like that there's also a a rim comes around like that um, just having a look while I'm doing this because there are areas but be careful don't want to be over that's it Oh, and there will be another little area there. It's the odd little fleck of dark. Like that. Then we just use a damp brush again. Just before they dry. Just to soften them off. There's nothing worse than real hard solid edges in, in this glass that's actually empty. So that's what we've got to try and depict, an empty glass, um, which I think probably um, does it. And there is a shadow that runs like that on the glass from the bottle. And then, of course, there is an edge there. And then we will just paint the back edge of that little turn like that just indicates that then we're on white so let's keep it nice and blue um, we have an edge like that and the side like that and there again although it's white can be quite dark and then I just spread it with a damp brush and that should give us an additional feeling of shadow right on that back edge but of course where it meets that area there underneath there's quite a deep shadow that but if you get the brush and just spread that in to Like that see and that is just enhance that I think anyway um, we're pretty much there well there's the pretty much the finished uh, subject just needs signing so I'm gonna use quite dark color a bit of that blue and a bit of brown and uh, just check it's dry I'm gonna sign on the right because I just feel that that I want to sign fairly well in because when it's mounted, it may be that um, it needs uh, trimming a little. You know, it may be that the mount cuts a little of that bottom off. But as you can see, I've removed the outer um, surround. And um, so that's the subject, or that's the painting. And there we have the subject. Well, there you have it. Um, hope you enjoyed that um, a look at this lovely little study that I've set up here put a cloth down the back and uh, basically produced a watercolour um, an interpretation of, of what I see there really um, get the brushes out get the paints out and have a go at uh, painting either this one or something similar using these sort of uh, techniques and um, um, hope you enjoy your own uh, painting session anyway thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all again very very soon and if you've not already done so 
please subscribe by clicking the link in the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much for watching.